super retro force. The newest Ease game is sailing over the horizon and will soon be upon us. Let me tell you why Ease 10 Nordics is a game that should be on your radar. The Ease series is Nihon Falcom's flagship action RPG series, and the 10th entry is out in just over a week. Ever since I encountered this series back in 2010 with Ease the Oath and Felgana, Ease has been up there as one of my favorite action RPG series, and it's a huge event for me with each new release. Ease 10 Nordics is scheduled to be released on October 25th, 2024 for the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and PC. Shout out to NIS America for providing me with a PlayStation 5 copy for the sake of this review. So strap yourselves in and let me tell you what I loved about it, what bothered me about it, and why this is a game to be excited for. But before I get started, if you enjoy JRPGs, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and let me know. Have you played the Ease series before? And are you looking forward to playing Ease 10? Let me know in the comments below. But with that being said, let's jump right into today's review of Ease 10 Nordics. The story of Ease follows Adol Kristen, an adventurer, as he travels around the world with his pal Dogi. Ease 10 in particular is one of his earlier adventures. Adol is 17 years old, and Nordics takes place after Ease 1 and 2. For this adventure, Adol has traveled to the Northern Islands, collectively known as the Obelia Gulf, only to meet the Normans, which are essentially the Ease equivalent to Nordic Viking pirates, who pillage and demand tolls from ships that enter the Obelia Gulf, and in exchange, protect those that pay the tolls. The Normans are constantly in conflict with the residents of Obelia Gulf and the Grider, an unexplainable, strange, undying breed of monster. As Adol arrives in Obelia Gulf, his ship is attacked by a Norman battleship, headed by Karja Belta, commonly referred to as the Pirate Princess, daughter of the only Norman Jarl. After landing in the town of Karnak with Karja, the town gets attacked by Gregor, and then mysteriously Adol and Karja are tethered together by a magical manicuff, and off begins their adventure to figure out the mystery of this manicuff and the Gregor. Story-wise, Ease 10 is very story-heavy. In fact, at the beginning of the game, I felt like there was too much story, and I was worried that I wouldn't enjoy Nordics like most other Ease titles. Thankfully, around chapter 2-3, to three, this kind of mellows out, and while there is still a story with each chapter, and a really good story at that, it's really only top-heavy. As you go on, cutscenes don't last nearly as long. I think at the beginning of the game it was like an hour or two before actually getting into the meat and potatoes of the action combat. This isn't bad, but it isn't what I was expecting honestly. Ease 9 was like this as well, but not nearly this bad. But as I said, after the first few chapters, the amount of story mellows out and you get plenty of chances to explore the world and enjoy the revamped action combat. Also before I get into talking about all the gameplay, one thing I noticed that will most likely be patched on day one is around the end of chapter 4 and onto the end of the game, some of the cutscenes didn't have the subtitles translated. The dialogue was in English, but the subtitles were in Japanese still. Like I said, I'm sure that it will be patched on day one, but as of the time of this recording, it has not been fixed. It's only the full motion video cutscenes where the dialogue doesn't appear in a text box, and it's only occasional ones. It won't really present an issue unless you are playing with the Japanese dub, so just be a bit forewarned about that. Historically, Ease has had three main styles of combat. The bump style, as shown in Ease 1 and 2, the platformer style in Oath and Felgana and Ark of Napishtim, and the party style shown in Ease 7 and Lacrimosa of Donna. Ease 10 Nordics kind of takes up the party style, but changes it up a bit. No longer do you build a party of three characters with varying attack types. In fact, the attack type system is gone, and this is something I am incredibly happy with. I was not a fan of being forced to use certain characters just to cover all aspects of weaknesses in previous party-based Ease games. In Ease 10, you only have Adol and Karja as playable characters, each with opposing elements. Adol is fire-based, as are most of his attacks, where Karja is ice-based. You can swap between the characters at any time, and it is encouraged for a couple of reasons. For example, 
if you burn or freeze an enemy, the opposing character will do extra damage on them until the status wears off. Each character learns their own skills via the skill tree, which I'll go into in a bit. But Ys-10 also employs duo skills, which are learned by leveling up, where solo skills only take that character's SP pool, duo skills take from both character pools, and it isn't necessarily to use an equal amount of SP between each character. For example, you have a duo skill that uses 100 SP. If both characters have full SP, it will break even and each character will use 50 SP. However, if Adol only has 20 SP at the time of activation, it will use Adol's 20 SP and then it'll use 80 of Karja's SP. This is usually what happens because your AI controlled characters will never use their SP on their own. This is a bit annoying as I generally played as Adol for the first 10 to 15 hours. When I started playing as Karja, she only had the most basic of skills since she hadn't mastered any skills on her own. And another thing with the duo system is enemies have a power attack. This can only be blocked by using the regular block button when you have your partner with you. This seemed a little bit pointless because you always have your character with you. There's like maybe one 10 or 15 minute sequence where you're by yourself. So power attacks were blocked just like any other attack. It seemed kind of strange. Anyways, as I mentioned previously, East 10 has a skill tree. Kinda. As you level up and check teleport points, you will gain skill points for each character. You can then use these skill points to unseal nodes on the skill tree. Most of these nodes are empty, and once unsealed, you can insert a mana seed to boost stats and learn stat abilities. However, occasionally, you will unseal a node, and it will teach you a new skill. There are tiers to the skill trees, which require you to level up to a certain point. Usually about 10 levels per tier, you will learn a duo ability, and it will unlock the next tier of skill nodes. There are five different types of mana seeds, all focusing on specific stats. Valor for strength and break, Metal for defense and vitality, Optimism for luck and reduced SP cost, Darkness will raise strength dramatically in exchange for reduced defense power, where Reverie, while rare, will raise all stats. Having a certain amount of points in each mana seed stat can also teach you innate abilities such as higher HP and increasing critical rate or increased damage reduction. So you can turn someone into a glass cannon with darkness mana seeds or stack them up with metal seeds and turn them into a tank. The mana seed system offers a ton of customization and coupled with certain accessories, you can turn Adol and Karja into absolute forces to be reckoned with. The gifts or movement abilities from Ease 9 make a return in the form of mana abilities. As you progress through the game, you get more mana abilities. These can be something like a grappling hook to swing from point A to point B, or a vision ability to see buried treasure, or even a hoverboard. These are all very fun, and I love using them all in conjunction with one another to explore the various islands and collect all sorts of items. There isn't as many as in Ease 9, and the exploration is not as vertical as it was, but they do evolve, giving you different capabilities as you continue through the game. Now, the one thing that I was concerned about after playing Ease 9 was exploration. Ease as a whole is all about the exploration. Adol is an adventurer, and he loves his exploration. In fact, there are several scenes in Nordics where Karja gets annoyed with Adol because he's willing to completely drop the incredibly time-sensitive task if it means he gets a chance to explore something. It's actually quite comical. I laughed out loud several times. In Ease 9, you were very restricted. Most of the game you were locked into a city and could only explore underground catacombs. It got really boring really quickly. In Nordics, you can explore pretty much anything. There are some invisible walls, but otherwise you have huge islands you can explore. Treasure boxes, buried treasure, ancient stone tablets, caves, jungles, you name it. You can explore everything to your heart's content. I had a ton of fun just sailing on my boat, finding various islands, and running around those islands, finding all the neat little nooks and crannies with treasure in them. Exploration is what I love about Ease, and Nordics has a ton of it. It renewed my faith in the series, and I was really concerned where the series was going to go after Ease 9. Anyways, speaking of exploration on ships, in Ease 10 Nordics, you spend a lot of time on ships. That is your main way to travel. But before I talk about the naval combat and the exploration on ships, can we just talk about Adol for a moment? This man. If you are familiar with the Ease series, you'll be aware that ships in Adol, they do not mix. Every time this man gets on a boat, it ends up destroyed or at the bottom of the ocean. 
They don't call him Adol Shipwreck Kristen for nothing, you know. The idea of having him in charge of his own boat seems like a very bad decision. Strangely enough, all's well that ends well, and he doesn't end up causing a life-altering shipwreck in Nordics. Alright, now that I've gotten that off my chest, let's talk about the naval combat. So, the prime gimmick of East 10 Nordics is that you have a whole naval combat aspect. Instead of fighting on foot, you can outfit your ship, the Sandris, with weapons and fight other ships in naval combat. This is also where raids from Ease 8 and 9 come into effect as well. You can level up your boat, upgrade your prime cannons, and get EX armaments like shooting out a blizzard that causes whirlpools or homing missiles or giant fireballs, so on and so forth. Early on, these are super frustrating. Your boat controls horribly, it's slow, and it just isn't fun. You're constantly fighting with trying to control that boat. I didn't enjoy it all that much. It gets better as you go on and upgrade your boat, but I found myself avoiding naval combat unless necessary because it's very, very clunky. Think Assassin's Creed Black Flag, but like, a hundred times worse. As I mentioned before, raids are done through naval combat, but they're really, really easy this time along once you get a little bit of upgrades into your boat. Instead of fighting X amount of waves of enemies, they consist of two parts. The first part involves you destroying three waves of two to three summoning pillars, and after you finish that segment, you enter the island on foot and run down a linear hallway, killing three to four waves of enemies. The idea is to do it as fast as possible, and depending how good you do during the naval segment, you can get bonuses for the on-foot segment, like increased gold, reduced damage, or increased SP recovery speed. There are 11 raids. I did them for the rewards, but each time I just wanted it to end because I wasn't a huge fan. On to the game's presentation. Yes, you've probably already noticed, but East 10 Nordics is not the most beautiful game under the sun. That's alright though. Nihon Falcom, being a relatively smaller studio, has never had the most graphically superior games. Be it the Trails series or the E series, both series seem to visually look like they're a generation behind, but they still get super positive scores. I don't mind this though. The games are fun, with really good stories, and that's all that matters. However, where it lacks in graphics, it makes up for in soundtrack. I've gone over this time and time again, but Falcom Sound Team JDK is up there in my top three for composers. Every time a Falcom game is announced or comes out, the first thing I do is jump onto YouTube and check out the soundtrack. East 10 is no different. A couple songs that really stand out for me personally are To Be Free, and Right On Mana. I don't think I've ever listened to an Ease soundtrack and not been totally amazed and enthralled by it. As for voice acting, you have both English and Japanese. Naturally, because of a personal choice, I went English. But one thing that threw me off was Adol. Now I'm used to having him with battle grunts and the like, but in Nordics, he actually has a few speaking lines, and every time he talked in a cutscene, it felt so weird. After nine games of a silent Adol, suddenly he talks. Now it's not that bad, it just caught me by surprise. I would assume it's because, for the most part, you only have Adol and Karja alone, and it would get weird having Karja talk to herself for 40 hours, but it still takes some getting used to. Speaking of length, let's talk about how long you should spend with East 10. So my playthrough took 37 hours. I thought I had done everything, but there was actually quite a bit of exploration I missed out on. If you just rush the story, miss the entire point of ease, and don't explore anything, you'll probably finish the game in about 20 to 25 hours. Now I don't suggest this, the exploration is the best part of the game, however, if you're more about story then feel free. If you want to do everything, I would imagine it would take somewhere between 50 to 60 hours. In fact, I've gone back and been playing it even after I finished the final boss, so there's that. As for pacing, I briefly talked about this earlier, but the story is very front heavy with lots of cutscenes setting the tone for the game early on. However, as you continue through the game, they don't end up being too long and the pacing gets so much better. Tough your way through the beginning, trust me, it's absolutely worth it. I give you the Shinky seal of approval. So there you have it. East 10 Nordics is a fantastic game and I would suggest it to anyone that loves action RPGs and exploring to their heart's content. Sure, the naval sections were rough, 
But if you have the power to tough your way through it, then it will be well worth your time, and it doesn't really damage how I feel about the game. Will you be picking up East 10 Nordics? If so, what console will you be picking it up for, and will it be your first Ease game? Let me know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ding that notification bell for more great JRPG videos. And if you haven't had enough of me yet, and are still unsure if the E series is for you, check out this video where I go over the E series, the different styles of E's, and where a good point to jump into the series would be. With that being said, I hate to say goodbye, but this has been Chinky. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, have a wonderful day.